Hey, what's up everybody, Rich Gaming Guy here. So you guys saw the thumbnail of this video, you guys saw the title. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how Drew from DK Oldies actually invited me to DK Oldies to tour their warehouse. Now this didn't happen last week, or the week before that, this happened about two, three months ago. So I'm gonna tell you guys all about my connection to Drew and how we have actually talked multiple times in the past. So it actually dates back two years. It doesn't date back just those two months. We have you know, been aware of each other for a period of time. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about all of this stuff. Now, before I do, know that I have no personal connection to Drew. I've never met him face to face, but we have shared multiple conversations. So this goes back two years. I used to sell a lot on eBay. I don't sell much on eBay anymore. However, when you see retro consoles or accessories that are in my videos, when I'm done with those, I typically sell them on eBay. I'm not a collector. I'm not big on hoarding stuff or letting it collect dust in the corner. When I'm done with something, I sell it. Simple as that. Uh, I don't like to just stock up stuff here. Uh, I, in fact, actually have more stuff here than I want to have. So I will be listing some more stuff on eBay very soon. Uh, and when I do that, I'll actually post about it here on the channel because I'm going to do some charity auctions where 100% of the proceeds will go to different charities. Uh, and I'm really excited about doing that as well. So I'll definitely be posting some videos when I decide to do that. I just want to clean up a couple consoles uh, and get them in as good a shape as possible before listing them. But that's, you know, separate conversation. So used to get a lot of stuff that I would refurbish. And in the process, I would get stuff that I didn't know how to refurbish. So I would buy like large bundles of retro game consoles, accessories, games, kind of all bundled together. And I did all of it mostly through Shop Goodwill. And I talk about Shop Goodwill com a lot here on the channel really cool thing about that is you can go in and search your location and find you know local goodwills that are selling stuff online that they aren't you know aren't making available to the public that would walk into that location so where i am there's one 30 minutes away and there's one that is just 10 minutes away both of them have a great selection of retro video game consoles accessories games etc on a weekly basis. So I'm even today where I don't have time to do it like I used to, I still always look and see what's going on there. Um, a couple weeks ago, I did a video on how I found um, a brand new in the box sealed in the shrink wrap um, N64 Majora's Mask, which is a Zelda game. Uh, and I posted about that so people could, you know, check it out because it was just a really cool find and it was local to me. So anyways, used to do this a lot. I would get these big bundles, some stuff I would use, and then you always get overflow stuff, stuff that you don't have a use for. So I bought this NES bundle. It was three consoles, bunch of accessories, um, bunch of games, and of the three consoles that were included, only one of them worked. So I kept the one that worked. Um, I'd never refurbished an, an NES console. I've opened them up, but I've never done any actual work in there. I have no knowledge of the inner workings of an NES which is kind of strange given the fact that I'm really familiar with some more um, challenging consoles out there, but the simpler, older ones, I just don't know much about. You know, I wasn't around for NES when it first came out. It was before my time, so I just don't have that connection to it or experience with it. So uh, the two that I didn't have a use for that didn't function, I didn't want to dive into, you know, playing around with them. I didn't have the time to, I decided, let me just list them on eBay. I'll list them, you know, for parts only in like salvage condition. Um, it, it has their own section in eBay. So it's very straightforward. I detailed exactly what I thought the issues were or where the issues, where the experience of those issues was. So one of them, I remember, it seemed to power on, but I couldn't get anything on screen. I changed the cables out. I had multiple cables. They were in that bundle, um, but there was something wrong with either the output or something internally that was causing that problem. So I detailed that in the listing for that one. I don't remember the issue with the other one. I think the other one just wasn't powering on. So I tried to be as straightforward, give as much details as possible, and I did a 99 cent auction for five to seven days. That's usually what I do on eBay, whether I'm selling something that doesn't work or I'm selling something that's in excellent condition. I don't look for you know, maximum value and try to get top dollar. I list for 99 cents and whatever it sells for, it sells for. Usually I get these in bundles, so the price per item is pretty cheap. So whatever they sell for is usually significantly higher than what I paid. So it works out for me, but in the process, usually the buyer gets a great deal as well. Usually auctions sell for less than, um, you know, like a buy it now or buy it now best offer sort of um, pricing situation. So 
listed these two NES consoles and turns out Drew bought them. He was the high bidder. I didn't know who Drew was, but when I saw his shipping label, I remember seeing the town in Pennsylvania that I remember DK Oldies being from. So I, as soon as I saw that, I took his address, copied it and pasted it right into Google. And sure enough, it popped up with DK Oldies website. And at the bottom of their website, you have their address. It was the same address. So I took his name, Googled that, and saw that Drew was in fact the owner of DK Oldies. So I actually sent him a message and I think we had talked back and forth through eBay, um, eBay messages. He asked me some questions about the consoles, you know, pertaining to their condition and specifically what I thought was wrong with them. Um, and then, you know, we didn't talk any further until I saw who he was and that he was the owner of DK Oldies. So I sent him a message and said, hey, I just shipped your stuff out just so you know, I realized that you're the owner of DK Oldies. I buy a lot of retro game consoles, accessories, games, all that, and I, I'm always listing stuff on eBay. So if you ever need anything or you know whatever, let me know and maybe I can just sell you you know whatever I happen to have laying around. Uh, no response for, to that message though from Drew at all. So I thought maybe he didn't want you know, it being known that he's the owner of DK Oldies um, because he didn't use in his shipping label DK Oldies name. He used his name with their address. So it was going to be shipped obviously to their location, but in his name. So I thought maybe I kind of overstepped my boundaries with him and, um, you know, obviously made it known that I Googled who he was and his address. Maybe he thought that was sketchy. I don't know. So never talked to him again for about a year and a half, two years. Next time I came in contact with him was through this channel. And at the time of, you know, the eBay connection, I still had the channel, but it was the early stages. I think I had just started it a couple months before. So I probably had like two, 3000 subscribers. Um, definitely a, a lower number than I have today. So I did my first T DK oldies video uh, about two, three months ago now, and it was very different than my more recent videos on DK Oldies. My first video was actually positive on them, um, or mostly positive, I'll say. I did offer criticism, but basically I went to their website and you saw me on camera with their website as well. And I was kind of just combing through their site, going through prices, going through different consoles and different layouts on their site. And one of the things I remember being critical of was the fact they used entirely only stock photo. And for consoles, they would use stock photos of the original controller with the original console. So it would make the buyer feel like they were buying everything original when in fact it would say that it comes with a third party controller. You actually have to opt to get a original controller for a $30 upcharge. I'm not sure of the price points now, but at the time it was $30 extra. So you had to opt in for additional money to get what was pictured. And I thought that was really misleading. I picked up on it, but I didn't think that the average person probably would pick up on that. So I mentioned that, you know, as I came across it in the video, um, but I went through everything and I was focusing on prices, not on whether they refurbish or not. In fact, at the time, not as many people, not as many as right now, were doing videos talking about you know, the unboxing and the fact that consoles weren't being refurbished. I think the same day that I posted that video, Review Tech USA posted his first video unboxing, whatever he got that first time, I think it was a PS2 maybe, uh, something like that. He unboxed it, opened it up and found that it wasn't refurbished. So my timing was totally wrong on posting that video because as soon as I posted that, everybody else started posting about how they were getting consoles that weren't refurbished. Uh, but I didn't talk about refurbished or not in that video. It was mostly price point. And I saw that they were charging a whole lot of money for games and consoles, but they had a one year warranty and they were advertising that they refurbished. So I was giving them the benefit of the doubt in that video. And I said, yeah, you know, they're really expensive, much more than what you would find on eBay, uh, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, etc. But they have the warranty. They say they're refurbishing. So, you know, if all of that's being done, then it justifies the high price point. And I feel like that would be the case to this day. You know, I'm a fan of Lukey Games because I had good experiences with getting refurbished consoles from them. Uh, I know some people haven't, and, you know, I'm not going to force my experience on anybody else. But in my experience, I got that Xbox console that I ordered, and you guys saw the video on that, came in refurbished condition. I was happy with that. Um, the price is very high, but you get the warranty and you get the um, refurbished condition. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of justified to an extent. So 
I thought the same here for DK Oldies. Now, fast forward, of course, I received the console, N64 console. It wasn't refurbished, didn't function correctly, so all of that went out the window as soon as I became an actual customer. So I posted this video, mostly positive, and it didn't get a ton of views. I think it did maybe like 4,000 views in a week. A couple days after posting, I think it was a day and a half later, I had an email from Drew. And it said, you know, Drew and his last name. And I knew his full name because I had had that past conversation with him through eBay and, you know, had shipped to him. So I was familiar with the name and the address from the shipping label. Clicked on it and it was a nice email just basically thanking me for my content, talking about DK Oldies and the fact that I was talking about them in a positive way. Where they, you know, at that point, they were just starting to get a lot of heat from the Review Tech USA video that had blown up and a lot more people that had come out of the woodwork detailing negative experiences. So he was, you know, thanking me again for the positive content um, on DK Oldies. And he said, if you're ever in the area, I'd love for you to come by. I'll give you a full tour of our warehouse. And he's actually not that far from me. Uh, I'm not in Pennsylvania, but I used to live in Pennsylvania, not far from where DK Oldies is. So you know, I thought, hey, you know, maybe sometime when I'm down in Pennsylvania, I'll stop by and, you know, take a tour of the place. That'd be pretty cool. But I was also thinking in the back of my head, he's sending me this email and he's detailing, you know, his defense to all this other content out there. I just thought it was strange that he would bring that up in a conversation with me. And he was talking about how he thought that these YouTubers were using his name to build themselves up and to get more exposure and all of that, which I mean, in all honesty, I know firsthand it does do that. Um, you do get views from covering DK Oldies. It's a hot topic right now. Um, so, you know, it was logical, but it was strange to me that he was detailing and defending himself to somebody that at that point had no, you know, real negative thoughts on him. Um, and my response to him was basically, oh, thanks. You know, maybe I'll take you up on that offer sometime. Thanks for reaching out to me, though. Thanks for sharing the kind words. And I had literally typed out, I'm actually about to place an order on your website for an N64 console that I'm going to do an unboxing and review video on. And I stopped as I had finished the sentence and started backspacing it. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to tell him that I'm doing this because what if he says, okay, and turns and just tells whoever handles orders, hey, when you see an order for this guy's name uh, and under this email address, possibly pull it aside and make sure that it's clean. I didn't want to give him that option and I'm so glad that I didn't do that and I backspaced that sentence out and just stayed away from, you know, mentioning anything about any sort of future content because I wanted to have an authentic unboxing video. Now, mind you, I was still positive on them. I still thought that they were probably a decent company. I figured I was going to get an N64 console and if you watch that video where I unbox the N64 console, you can see how my thoughts on everything just changes midway through that video when I open up the N64 and it is just covered with dust inside. And it's obviously apparent that it had never been refurbished. You see live in that video how my opinion on them totally changes and switches over into the other direction entirely. So I'm glad I never you know, sent that last sentence in that email. And I think we went back and forth a little bit talking about he's complimenting me on some of my other videos that he had watched uh, on my website and the colors that I use in there and stuff. So we just had like small talk back and forth, but it was, you know, a positive conversation, of course, because I had done positive content for him, um, but never talked to him again after that. It would be very awkward to, but I still have his email in my inbox. If I type in D-R-E-W, that is the first email that pops up actually. So I've actually thought about reaching out to him, obviously, because I went from being not necessarily a fan, but positive on DK Oldies to the exact opposite as soon as I became a customer. So it's different from your YouTuber that sets out to do a video on DK Oldies already with the mindset that this is probably gonna be a scam and this is probably going to be the outcome because no matter who does a video on YouTube, we have an idea in our head of where our content is going. You know, I'm gonna do an unboxing video, but I think that that I'm going to be getting scammed in the process. That's how most people that are doing fresh videos on DK Oldies think because they've already seen this other content. When I did it, I thought I'm gonna open up this N64 console and I'm gonna prove everybody wrong that they aren't you know, scamming people and they aren't screwing people over. And all I did was prove myself wrong in that process. And it was a tough pill to swallow in all honesty because I was entirely wrong 
on what I thought DKLDs was all about. I was, you know, pretty confident that they weren't a scam at that point until opening the console and then, you know, we know how that all unfolded here. So it's a strange situation having had multiple conversations with the owner of the company that I have done video content on, you know, basically exposing for what they're doing. Um, and I've thought about reaching out to Drew directly and just saying, hey, dude, you know, what's up? Let's let's talk about this because we've obviously had multiple conversations dating back multiple years. Um, and you saw how I was a fan or a, you know, at least positive on your company and how you changed that by, you know, doing what you did with that N64 console, trying to send a console that had never been refurbished to me. Um, and it lines up perfectly with so many other people's experiences. So let's talk about it. You know, I've thought about reaching out to him and doing that, and maybe I will. Uh, maybe you guys will push me, give me the kick in the ass that I need to do that. Um, but it's a weird sort of situation. It's definitely awkward having had that connection to him prior to the experience that I had and all the content that I've done since then. Um, but I don't feel bad about the content that I've done. I want to make sure that I say that. I don't feel bad about it because it's all justified and it's all based off of my firsthand experience with them. You know, I didn't come into this and just start trashing them for no reason. I had a firsthand experience that supported any claim that I've ever made on this channel about what they do, what their business practices are, and all of that. So that is my story about Drew and I and our past conversations and um, crossing of paths. But um, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Do you find it interesting that these two people on you know opposing sides of this conversation have crossed paths and actually conversed with each other multiple times? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it though, leave a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube and you guys know the deal. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed to the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. That's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next video.